my name is Keitha Dunstan and I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic at Bond University. Bond University is Australia's first private university. We are completely private so that uh, I guess gives us a very different flavour in what we're trying to achieve with our programs. So it, we are very student focused and very focused on um, excellent outcomes for the students and the, and the student experience. So originally I, I was in the position as uh, Chair of Academic Senate and we had a paper-based system for managing curriculum and for going through all of the approval processes of Academic Senate and at the time in my first year as Chair of Academic Senate I conducted an um, audit to make sure we are, were fully compliant with um, the AQF requirements and one of the first things I found is it was very difficult to get the documentation that I needed to even check whether we were fully compliant, uh, let alone really have a good sense of, of what was going on in the university. So I felt there was quite a sense of urgency to um, improve our systems. Um, everything was there, but um, because it was all paper-based, things were in compactus. Um, things were, uh, at the time they were approved, they were uh, entered into the student system. But over time, various people in the back room of the student system would modify things. And so we potentially um, had some programs that um, weren't actually being offered the way that Academic Senate had approved them. So uh, I wanted to have a system that made sure um, not only that the approval processes were appropriate but that there was uh, one source of knowledge that we could all rely on rather than um, pieces of paper being in different places and um, as I said student systems interpreting pieces of paper and then that getting put into other systems which were then put in different places as well. So, so overall coordination, um, improvement of, of business processes um, but from my perspective at that point of time as Chair of Academic Senate is I wanted to make sure that I could be completely sure that we were following all of our quality processes that we had in place. We initially chose a Kauri, um, Lauren Hives, who um, uh, looks after the uh, learning and teaching aspects of ITS for the university. Um, actually, um, I think it was at a conference, she um, came across the, the um, work that Akari was doing and brought their website uh, to my attention. Um, and I looked at what they had there at that particular point in time, and I thought, well, this is exactly what I want. So it, so it was uh, a demonstration page which showed that um, you could look at the program and you could see all the subjects in the program, you could look at the subject, you could see the content of the subjects, you could look at the assessments and you, um, I saw the potential for how that could actually map through for a complete assurance of learning. So, so my probably main motivating was from the Academic Senate compliance point of view but by that time I was also the Pro Vice Chancellor Learning and Teaching and I got quite excited about the prospects for using this system to actually assure the quality of the learning as well. So um, an extra dimension um, to that governance of what we're doing in the learning and teaching space. Managing risk in this space is really important. We, uh, all universities have, uh, need to be fully compliant with um, Texas standards and so on. So you do need to make sure um, not only that you, um, I guess, design the right processes, but that you actually do have ways of checking and auditing um, so that you can um, ensure that you are fully compliant at all points in time. So, so where you don't have a system that is very uh, easy to check, it is very hard to follow through on that um, checking of the compliance and I think that's where the risk comes up. Um, as I said, because um, our main record of what was happening in the space was what um, computer type people had put into the system, it, wasn't, it was quite opaque to people like me. So it wasn't easy for me to actually um, check things to ensure things were um, done the way that they should be done. And obviously that introduces a risk because that's one of the important parts of academic uh, governance is that we do have um, complete transparency of everything that we're doing. Part of um, me getting everybody on board, which wasn't necessarily easy, but early on uh, as part of um, achieving that consensus that we needed to do something, is um, I promised people that we would start with quite um, conservative ambition, which I actually literally said if 
um, if all that happens is that our current system is now in an electronic system, I will be happy because at least then uh, I'm not relying on things that are in different filing cabinets in different people's rooms. I can search things, again going back to that risk and that compliance, I, I can check all of those things um, and anything else that we can achieve on top of that is going to be a bonus. And so by having that more um, conservative ambition for the naysayers and, and a particular group that were um, quite against it initially were the people that were looking after our um, systems at that particular point in time because they had to, from their point of view, it's not broken, so why are you fixing it? And it's going to be way too difficult to simplify things the way that you want to have them simplified because it, it has to be as complicated as it is. Um, whereas uh, I'm an accountant by background, so I understand processes and it didn't need to be anywhere near as complicated as our current paper-based system was. Um, but as we went along and we um, got to the point where we had basically replaced the paper system with the electronic system, then I think that's when we entered into the phase that we currently are in, where um, we can be much more ambitious about what we can achieve with the system and that's when the, the, um, the full assurance of learning aspects of what can happen with the system um, have been a focus and, um, and others um, have been focusing on other improvements that um, we are able to obtain because of having this system. So, so we've sort of moved from a basic functioning phase into a what could we achieve with this phase and um, and there's I think probably many more things that we haven't thought of yet that we would be able to do because of now having this in an electronic way that can be now integrated across systems so that we can uh, use the business intelligence in ways that we would like to. I think part of the reason why it um, was maybe somewhat easier for us to um, start the journey with Akari was because we were so small and as part of being small we don't have a lot of resources behind these things so we hadn't previously invested in systems to try and help with this process so we were going um, from a very paper, you know, prehistoric if you like paper system into um, what I'd like to think will become like a Rolls-Royce version of, of what we can do. For a lot of other universities, I know they have already invested in their own um, versions of electronic curriculum management systems. So I think for some of them, uh, their challenge is going to be um, how they modify existing pr um, processes to work in a more streamlined fashion with, with the CARI. So, so for us, it was a a very obvious big jump in what we were doing. For others, it, it may be more of an incremental change and more of a um, perhaps using a curry in a way that it um, better integrates and, and perhaps with these aspirational things that I was talking about with assurance of learning. So again, other uni bigger universities I know have, have invested in um, processes um, separately again for assurance of learning, whereas uh, Akari gives us this opportunity to integrate all of this and, and, and have it all sitting in one place. So that will be um, part of their challenge. Um, I think the main thing is, uh, what I was talking about before, is whenever you want to uh, go through a change process into a new system, is about taking everyone with you and having them believe um, in the benefits of the new system that you're going to, because um, if you have um, stakeholders that are not on board um, and they are trying, they sort of try to sabotage you or, or try to not help you, um, then it's, it's not going to um, be successful. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I think it's just a part of change. So, so we did have um, almost a, a year of talking before we actually started doing very much. So, so I'd suggest that it be thought of that way as a long-term process uh, where there is a lot of consultation. And I think other universities would probably have the advantage of if their existing processes are already well developed, um, then it is maybe a business process improvement process before they actually go into um, you know, using something like a curry. One of the um, very obvious benefits that I see right now is 
um, part of our uh, approval processes for improvement of curriculum is that a, a subcommittee of Academic Senate, which is our program subject review committee, uh, does look at all proposals for new programs or changes to programs or new subjects or significant changes to subjects. Under our old system, because we were so um, paper bound and um, a thousand pages possibly for a meeting. Um, so it was a lot of things to flip through. We got, we were necessarily very involved in process and um, whether forms had been filled in correctly. Now that we're using Akari and literally um, rather than filling in a form when a new program is going to be created, what the faculty needs to do is to actually input the program into the system. Um, and, of, and then as it goes through its approval processes and is approved, ultimately it is sort of uploaded as an approved program, but we don't have that separate, well, let's put something on paper and then somebody else transfers it from paper onto the computer system. It's actually um, inputted it directly into the computer system. So instead of having the thousand pages at the meeting, we have people there with their devices and they are flicking through the actual uh, records in, in Akari. So it means that uh, tenure of the conversation has become very different. So instead of us having debates about whether field 11C is filled in correctly, we're actually talking about um, the subject descriptions, we're talking about the, the um, um, program descriptions, we're talking about the program learning outcomes and why they're phrased the way that they are. So we're actually doing the things that we really should have been doing, uh, whereas in the absence of having a system that simplifies the process part, um, we were stuck in doing a lot of process things. Um, the, uh, just another example, the Secretary of Program Subject Review Committee um, now has um, much less to do because it is simply the um, documentation of the agenda and simply um, forwarding approvals on the things that have been approved. So, so it's not, a, again, creation of a, um, another set of papers which is a record of everything that's been approved, is the system now knows what's been approved and we don't have to create a manual record of that. So, so it's streamlined everything so that we can now worry about the things we should have been worrying about. For the average academic of the university, the main impact that Akari has had on them is that we now have the subject outline um, process embedded within Akari. So um, again, just one of the things under our old system is we used to try and keep um, records of past subject outlines um, because students go to other universities and they want credit for subjects and so on, so they want to seek those subject outlines, we were largely relying on, again, on paper that's in a filing cabinet somewhere and so on. Um, but now the academics, when they complete their subject outline, that goes directly into the system. And then once that subject outline for that semester is approved, it becomes a permanent record of the subject outline for that semester. So again, it's a, the encyclopedia or the source of knowledge, um, if you like, um, from that. So initially, there was work for academics because they had to go from the old system into this new system. Um, but now that they are in the new system, um, from semester to semester, all they have to do is deal with any incremental changes that they have made to their subject. Um, so it's not um, separately creating a new document, which is, this is the new semester's um, subject outline. It is, well, here was last semester's outline, what do I want to change? And then I upgrade it to the next semester's outline. Um, so again, things are much more streamlined from their point of view. And I think also, um, similar to what I was saying before about the committee, I think it focuses academics on the right things because now um, they can see the importance of things like subject learning outcomes and the assessments and the mapping of the assessments to the subject learning outcomes. So, so I think we always had um, sound assurance of learning practices going on, but because it was so uh, less subject to scrutiny and transparency, um, academics may not have been concerned about the, as concerned about the quality of the, say, the learning outcomes that they write, 
because nobody else was going to read them other than themselves and the students. Now, because they know it's all available on the system and that myself and other people on the push of a button can read every single one of them, um, I think it's focused people's attention on the quality of what they're doing and I think that's been a very good outcome. I'm very optimistic about how Akari, the system, is actually going to help us with our assurance of learning. Um, we are piloting um, the assurance of learning in, in some programs um, using the system from the beginning of next year, but I, I hope to have it fully implemented um, for the whole university by the end of next year or, or early in, in 2020. Um, and again, being quite modest about my expectations in the first instance, but what it will be able to do is highlight um, what all of this looks like. So, um, so program learning outcomes and being, will be, have been mapped to subjects and subject learning outcomes have been mapped to assessments and so on. But up until now, we haven't reported that back to faculties in any summary way so, so that when um, we do have all of this working we will be able to provide that back to faculties and they will get to see what it all looks like all mapped together and does, does the jigsaw puzzle actually look like something or oh my goodness that's a bit of a mess, that's a bit of a mess. So, so I'm fully expecting um, that initially we will continue to drive a lot more change um, as Again, the light of transparency is shone on some of these um, things. Um, but once um, we do have that working, then my expectation is that constructive alignment will just become part of business as usual. Um, because not surprisingly, while um, you can train academics to understand what they're doing with assurance of learning processes, if they don't believe that this is actively monitored and that somebody is actually using this for something, um, they don't necessarily take the task as seriously as you would like them to. Whereas um, once we can report it all and have it all in black and white and in front of a meeting, um, it'll suddenly be, oh, look at that person's subject learning outcomes, so, you know, ha ha ha. <laughs> so, so I think it will, um, you know, put, put some discipline in, into practice. The ultimate aim is that it, it's business as usual and you know, we enter grades you know, in, into um, the Blackboard system um, but in entering the grades the way that we enter the grades it's all structured in the way that we can then um, do the assurance of learning you know, by program learning outcome and so on so we've got um, a lot of data there that's available for the analytics um, and as you say that can help us with managing the risk and so on because we can for example, if there's a program that um, has a maybe a, uh, unexpectedly high failure rate in a semester, we would be able to actually look at the, the student's performance or the, or the um, program and the student's performance within that program over a period of time to try and identify, well, what is going wrong? You know, is it particular subjects? Is it um, part of the design of the program and so on? So it'll give us a, um, a lot more opportunity to use data in, in ways to uh, have a better understanding of, of the student outcomes. <laughs>